Hi, welcome to the fifth episode of my VMworld CEO tour. Today I'm here at Tintree with Kieran Harty. Welcome, Kieran. Thank you very much, Hans. Hi. So, um, Kieran, you have been briefed, right? I, I've told you the question, so let me just start off with the first question. Kieran, who are you today? Okay. Um, so, from a business perspective, I'm CEO of Tintree, a very fast growing company. Uh, on a personal level, uh, I'm a, a guy who lives in San Francisco. Um, mm -hmm. I have uh, three kids that are my first kid actually went into high school, his first day at high school today. Uh, and um, I'm somebody who uh, enjoys uh, working hard here, um, but also enjoys spending a lot of time with my family and just enjoying uh, the city uh, of San Francisco, where I've been living for uh, for quite a long time at this point. Yeah. What's your kid going to choose? Going to choose at, at high school? What's what's uh, his uh, interests? He's he's interested in math, uh, mm -hmm. but he also enjoys to write. He enjo enjoys writing. He's going to a, a small school in San Francisco, and mm -hmm. uh, he's a little nervous this morning, yeah. uh, but uh, I think he will. I think he'll get on uh, very well at the school. You got any particular hobbies? Um, I like um, I like actually playing soccer with my with my kids, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, we have a um, a place up in um, uh, Sonoma County, which is north of, of San Francisco. So I li like spending um, some time there and uh, doing some some work on the on some land that we have there. Yeah, working as a, working at a startup is is um, what I hear a lot is, is people that have spent many hours but still need to need to disconnect how, how does that does that work well for you it, disconnecting it, yeah it does uh, it's I think you have to do it um, we're actually in an area where we only have um, satellite internet so it's sufficiently slow that wow. it's, it's frustrating to use it um, and so I think it gives a you know some good thinking time uh, and just you do need to decompress at, at mm -hmm. certain points so yeah I think sometimes it's actually also quite stressful in a startup right you have other stresses than, than people have in, in, in a company that exists for 15 or 20 years. You, you do, but I, but I think you have more control over them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I've worked at large companies. I was at EMC for a while and, and, uh, and VMware, and um, you have a lot more control over your destiny. It's a different set of stresses, but um, you know it's, it's exciting, and you, you can also, again, you have much more control over, over what happens um, day to day. Um, rather than being at the whims of a you know a tens of thousands of people uh, company. Yeah, so you actually already mentioned a, f a few of your last challenges. Um, that goes straight into the second question, of course, is um, how did you become the person you are today? Sure. So I'm I'm originally from Ireland, actually, um, and I I came out to uh, Silicon Valley uh, to actually to study at Stanford uh, back. It's a long time ago now. Uh, and I spent um, a few, uh, actually quite a few years at Stanford. I was, my advisor was a, um, Professor David Sheraton, who was a, actually an investor in this company um, mm -hmm. and was, was one of the original investors in Google uh, and VMware. And um, I spent time there, did research work um, and um, finished up my PhD and then worked at a set of small companies. Um, and one of the people actually that was on my thesis committee uh, Mendel Rosenblum, uh, who is the founder of, of VMware, uh, was looking around for a, a new position back in 1999, and I joined uh, VMware uh, back when it was, I think it was employee number 25, wow. uh, and uh, ran um, all of engineering there for about seven years. So that was that was really the kind of the formative experience, and I've had um, a. Uh, you know, again, previous experience at small companies, but that that was a very, um, uh, you know, a very interesting ride. Um, I remember when there was huge amounts of skepticism about what would you do with this virtualization on the server side, uh, and um, you know, it was tough in the in the first few years when we were at VMware. But it was very exciting to see what's actually happened to it today, and obviously, you know, um, the company. Uh, having this enormous presence in the market. Yeah, it's so. a big ecosystem. If, if you look at those first years at um, engineering at VMware, yeah. give me one or two um, points in time of, of, of development or, or of challenges for yourself. Yeah. But you said this is something that was important for me in those first few years. 
Okay, so, so in terms of challenges, at, at what level? Personal challenges that you found at VMware, things that changed you as a, as, as a person, or things that you have overcome. Yeah, I think the, the, the things that are, are probably, the, the most challenging period, we had two challenging periods actually at VMware, and this sort of causes personal challenges for you in the, in the role as I was running engineering. Um, the first was we were originally targeting the service provider market, um, and it's a long time ago now, but that was the, uh, the, you know, the peak of the internet, the early internet bubble, and our, uh, our, our market basically evaporated. Um, and there was a real question there of are we doing the right things, are we focusing on the right product, um, and that has a very strong influence uh, on what you do day to day on the engineering side. Um, and people, you obviously need to motivate them to know that there's there's going to be a future um, for the product. So there was a lot of, um, I think, doubt um, at that time in terms of what markets we were going to focus on. Mm -hmm. um, I remember um, somebody asking, uh, one of the engineers asking when we were going to kill off ESX server as a product, because wow. it really wasn't doing very well. Um, and um, the other challenge actually, and this is one that I think I've learned a good amount from was when Microsoft entered the market, um, when they bought a company called Connectix, and um, the, that really caused us a lot of challenges, right, in terms of we were now um, a, uh, viewing ourselves as having competition. Microsoft was going to say that we were, uh, you know, that they were going to enter uh, the space. I think what I learned from that, though, is don't overestimate your competition. Do a realistic estimate of what your competition has. Uh, and you know, I think uh, Microsoft has a good product now, um, yeah, but, it but it took, took quite a while. A long it took a long way. time to do yeah. it. Yeah. So. Well, like everything at Microsoft, it takes three generations to get to a mature yeah. product, right? Yeah. They always do it well in three times, and exactly. they actually are now at that third level. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's a mature product in the market now. It is. To yeah, be no, honest, I yeah. think it's a good product. Yeah. Mm. So. So yeah, we, that that's two of the of the challenges. Um, what happened after VMware? So after VMware, um, I was really wanted to uh, do a startup. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I decided that I was going to spend, uh, you know, sit down in my basement office and look at something where uh, I could do a, a company that was in a large market. Um, you know, it had to be a big market because otherwise, you know, why bother? And, and I know venture capitalists don't care too much about small markets. Um, it also had to be something where there was a lot of technology change. Um, where there was a real opportunity for uh, a startup company to actually enter the market. It also had to be something that was technically challenging, um, because if it's too easy to do it, mm -hmm. uh, then you know, everyone's going to do it. There will be enough it. people to do there it. There will be enough people to do it. Um, so that was, um, I remember you know, sitting in my office, as I said, the light bulb went on um, when I was reading some uh, papers about flash memory and sort of the impact that that could have on the storage space. So I you know, literally just combined together the, the concepts of virtualization um, and using flash memory as the, as the new technology mm -hmm. uh, as a basis for storage um, and said what we you know, really wanted to work on was storage that was specifically for virtualized environments um, and that was uh, making extensive use as flash memory. Mm -hmm. um, and started working with a venture capitalist, NEA, um, and put together a proposal, and then took money in uh, in two thousand eight. Yeah. So well, one of the one of the unique selling points of of a tin tree is that VM um, aware storage. That's Absolutely. the whole thing, right? It's it's focused on the virtual machine, not on not on the data source. Was Absolutely. that was that in the initial ideas, or is that, or is that something that grew with the product? Yeah, it's a, it's actually an interesting one, and I I sort of uh, looked at some of the slides that we did in the early days. Mm -hmm. Uh, the idea remained very much, very similar actually to what we, uh, we originally were looking at. Uh, and so it was really the fundamental belief that VMware had changed the way that computing was done mm -hmm. uh, and that it was possible using the virtual machine as the abstraction, as the new abstraction for storage, that you could actually build something very, very different. Mm -hmm. um, I think what did change was uh, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen with flash memory prices. Um, we ended up using Intel um, SSDs as opposed to probably, you know, what would have been uh, PCIe SSDs. Um, so I think on an implementation that's just, level, that's just a physical platform, it, right? It is. It yeah. is. You're focusing on silicon. And exactly. Where, where that silicon is, maybe tomorrow you'll do it all in, in memory. I mean, 
once you, once you get that once you get the idea of how you want to do it, it doesn't matter which hardware you're using for it, right? Yeah, it it does and it doesn't. So I think from a software level um, is. You know the value is in the software, um, but one of the reasons we decided to do an appliance uh, is that people are much more comfortable buying hardware, buying integrated hardware and software solutions, and it also uh, you know provides a much better experience. Um, you know one of our big values is being what we call zero management, and um, you know what people really care about is fire and forget, being mm -hmm. able to you know, have the storage. They don't care about storage, they care about applications. So, so hardware does and doesn't matter, I think. Yeah, but I mean, if, if you go to if, whether or not using a PCIe flash or flash on the motherboard um, or, or an SSD, it kind of, that evolves, right? The, the, the technology will evolve with the products. It, it, it evolves, yes, but you want to be sort of at the particular point that you ship, mm -hmm. the customer doesn't care, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, and, uh, but so you need to be at the right price points, you need to be, so that's, I think, the influence mm -hmm. that, it, that, that it actually has. So that's a, this is how we, how we become to, to, to treat today. What happened in the last 12 months, because actually, we're in a new kitchen, which yep. means we're in a new building. Yes. Actually, when when I came to to the office, I still uh, went to Al Camino Road. Okay. Uh, so I was at, at 2570 Al Camino Road just an hour ago. Okay, it's a little uh, better here. Right? Yeah, it actually is better. You come from a, from a shared multi-floor yep. office to an office of your own, a yep. whole floor of your own, uh, single single floor. Uh, office, pretty big. So what happened in those last 12 months with the company from your own perspective, of course? Yeah, so it's it's been a really, uh, it's been a really great last 12 months. So in the last 12 months, we've, um, you know, we've over doubled as a company uh, in the, uh, we have over 200 customers now. Um, one of the things that's really gratifying is that our earlier customers are buying more and more systems. Mm -hmm. um, we actually grew the number of virtual machines that we have on Tintrees by 365% um, over the last year. Um, we grew the, the number of um, grew our revenues by um, uh, over 110% um, for the first half of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we're continuing to see that same growth. Uh, our resellers um, have also um, grown dramatically. We've, we've more than doubled the number of resellers um, over the last year. So what I think we're, uh, you know, what's been really gratifying is we're, we're getting into bigger and bigger deals. Um, and, uh, you know, people have much uh, larger deployments. We have one customer that has, um, you know, I think it's 26 systems at this mm -hmm. stage now. Um, and so we're getting into large scale. What's your so global position today? Global position. Yeah, I mean outside of North America. Oh, uh, so we're we're in our main office in Europe is uh, is in uh, is in London uh, mm -hmm. right now. Uh, we're also in Tokyo, and um, we have uh, offices in in Germany, in uh, uh, the Netherlands, uh, in um, and also in the in the Nordics. Uh, and we, we added most recently a, a team in, in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So um, we're very we're a very international yeah. company. We decided to go international early. Um, it's a little different in just in terms of the some of the buying decisions in other countries. Um, but uh, it's you know it's gratifying to see um, you know people using it throughout the world. We actually have a few systems in Ireland um, as well, which is being a being an Irishman. <laughs> Um, I'm glad to glad to see that. You could call so. home to the family and say, "I'm I finally yeah. made it." <laughs> finally, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm I'm big in Ireland as well now. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's today. Give yep. me um, Tintree, uh, last week of August 2014. Where will we be? What's your biggest challenge? Yeah, so I think we will uh, will continue to grow at a um, a very very rapid um, rate. Um, I you know expect that we will um, more than double um, over the next year. We'll see bigger and bigger deployments. Um, I think the biggest challenge um, is really around keeping pace um, with that level of growth. Um, and it's probably the most competitive it's ever been uh, in terms of hiring um, in the Valley at this stage. Uh, and um, it's making sure that uh, you know we're hiring the right people, we're not compromising in terms of standards. Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, when people are here, um, keeping them happy um, and pointed in the, in the same direction. So we're all, uh, we all know, um, you know the mission that we're on and uh, uh, that we're, uh, you know, we're 
it's harder and harder to um, be aligned as you as you become a larger company. So that's that I think is going to be the, mm. the bigger challenge. One of the things we um, th there was a discussion like I think it was two weeks ago on Twitter, and it started with a question from um, I lost his name. Never mind. Um, it was about so you got now Tintree, let's say Nimble and Tgile three. Um, hybrid storage arrays and the question was how how does it come that the tier one players are nowhere around you know? so uh, the question here is that when we look at 2014 how long do you think you can keep up keep being ahead of the of the big players so, so I think um, I think the big players and I, I worked um, at EMC for a while so I kind of know how they operate the big players have a first of all they're who we compete with the most, okay? Yeah. So regardless, if you look at the size of the storage market, it's consistently NetApp and EMC, I would say, that we compete with. And we do, you know, we obviously do run into other smaller players, um, but that's who all of us um, actually compete with. Um, the bigger players have a challenge. Um, they essentially have a, a products that were built, uh, you know, back in the 90s. The original products, in many cases, were built back in the 90s. They're, they're not going to change those products to, you know, to deal with a completely new infrastructure, both on the virtualization side, the VMware storage, uh, and also that's flash-based. So I don't think they're going to suddenly change their products. Uh, Do you to think be able to keeping us. ahead of the market will still be not that hard? Uh, so I think on a technology level, keeping ahead of the market, um, I mean, you shouldn't make any assumptions about yeah. it. Uh, but I think it's it very feasible to uh, to do that. Uh, I think that they have a degree of presence in the market. Um, you know, obviously that's greater than any mm -hmm. of the small companies that are there. So I think the challenge is just to get the uh, you know the presence on the street, to get larger and larger deals, mm -hmm. uh, and to build out the the reseller network to be able to, to get your sales force that. out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So um, we're a few days, actually, very close now to VMworld 2013. Yeah. Uh, the obvious question is: Well, you come from VMware, and yeah. it's a VM-aware storage. So yeah. it, it's it's almost not necessary to ask the question, but I'll, I'll do it anyway. How important is VMware as such as an ecosystem and and the event for you? Yeah. So it's it's huge. I mean, it's our and we actually decided this year that we would do a platinum sponsorship um, of. Uh, at VMworld, so we're going to have a very big presence uh, at VMworld with good placement, a lot of really interesting customer presentations actually, and um, some new demos. We're going to demo something uh, called Tintree Global Center, which is for managing, um, you know, we're going to show a demo of um, management of very large numbers of, of virtual machines. So it's it's critical. Those are our, um, that's our target customer, um, and uh, you know, having them all in the one place where they can actually see the products is critical for us. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's a, uh, the challenge at VMworld is, you know, just um, there's a lot of noise there. And so we're very focused on showing things that are different. Mm -hmm. So a large amount of our demos will be around showing large scale systems, um, showing how this stuff really operates, and also, you know, having customers uh, and partners talking about us. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that will be the, uh, that's our focus at, at VMworld, but we're very we're very excited about it. A lot of a lot of really good stuff. Yeah, a last thing that I, I I can't not mention it is is the the support Tintree has had from in the beginning for for the V experts and, and the whole community. So um, appreciate that. Very, a, a very welcome. Big, a big thank you from the whole community here. Great. Um, you like your shirt? Each 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 year, there's nice shirts. There's yeah. a ton of gifts, but there's also there's there's a big um, help for, for the, you give a lot of information um, and, and help to, to the community. We like that a lot. So thank you for that. Um, and nothing less rests me more than saying thank you very much for your time. Thank you very for much for the Hans. interview and looking forward to next week. We are, as we are. <laughs> so thank, <laughs> thank you. you.